The strongest earthquake ever to strike east of the Mississippi River that happened over 200 years ago was never over, according to some scientists. Most earthquakes last seconds to minutes, and the official record breaker so far is a silent one in Sumatra that was going on for 32 years. This slow slip event triggered a massive quake and a tsunami. So if it's true that the new Madrid earthquake is still sending aftershocks, we'll have a new top name for this sad list. The earthquake started in December of 1811 with a powerful quake in a sparsely populated part of northeast Arkansas. They felt the shaking almost a thousand miles away in the White House, and the tower bells were ringing in Boston even further away. It even made the mighty Mississippi flow backward for a few minutes over new waterfalls formed by shifted ground. The town of New Madrid, Missouri completely disappeared in the disaster. The Earth wouldn't stay still until the end of January the following year, when things got serious again. A massive quake hit, this time near the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, right in the Missouri boot heel. Geologists believe it was a rupture on the New Madrid Fault, putting even more strain on the nearby Real Foot Fault. Just when people thought it couldn't get worse, another two weeks of trembling passed, and the Real Foot Fault snapped deep beneath New Madrid. Down in Tennessee, about 15 miles south of New Madrid, the ground uplift created Real Foot Lake. Steamboats were chugging along the river, with thousands of trees floating and acres of woods torn apart by the quake. In St. Louis, Missouri, which is 160 miles away, buildings were badly damaged, and chimneys fell in Cincinnati, Ohio, 400 miles away. People all the way in Montreal, Canada, over 1,000 miles away, felt the earth shake. Seismologists have registered about 200 small earthquakes in the New Madrid seismic zone every year since 1974. Some researchers believe that up to 30% of those were aftershocks from those big quakes back in 1811 and 1812. In parts of the US where there's not much tectonic action going on, these aftershocks could keep rumbling for years, maybe even centuries after the big ones hit. Aftershocks are the Earth's way of releasing all that built-up stress from the main quake. When the ground shakes from the first earthquake, it puts a lot of pressure on the rocks nearby. And when those rocks can't take it anymore, they crack, causing even more shaking. That's the aftershock. And they can be pretty intense, especially right after the main quake, but weaken over time. Not all scientists agree that contemporary earthquakes have to do with those from 200 years ago. We mostly associate faults with those lines where Earth's plates meet. But there's a whole network of those right under the center of the North American plate. They're like relics from 750 million years ago, when North America was part of a supercontinent called Rodinia. When Rodinia started to break up, it left behind these rifts, weak spots in the Earth's crust that run deep beneath the modern Midwest. It could explain the earthquake action. An international team of geologists decided to take a fresh look at three major earthquakes that shook North America and end the debate. They used a new math method called the nearest neighbor. It says that if earthquakes are too close in space, time, and magnitude to be independent background events, then one is assumed to have triggered the other. Depending on how you look at the numbers, somewhere between 10 to 65 percent of the recent quakes in the region could be aftershocks of those historic earthquakes. And a huge quake that hit Charleston, South Carolina at the end of the 19th century might explain up to 72 percent of the earthquakes in the area since then. But not all places are the same, so the scientific debate continues. In 1774, British explorer James Cook noticed a glow in the distance. It was the volcano of Mount Yasser in Vanuatu. This bad boy had been spewing lava and ash ever since, and it's quite likely that it's been doing that for way, way longer. The volcano has been sitting at alert level since October 2016, which means things are really unsettled around there. They've even marked off a 2,000-foot radius around the crater to keep people safe. There have been low to moderate outbursts, shooting out ash, gas, and steam, and some bigger blasts throwing stuff outside the crater. Satellite images have picked up on some hot spots of sulfur dioxide plumes, 
showing that Yasser is still cooking up a big storm down there. Stromboli, one of the volcanic islands near Sicily, officially has the Guinness World Record as the longest continuously erupting volcano. It has been putting on a fiery show for over 2,400 years straight. Ancient sailors nicknamed it the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. Most of the time, Stromboli's just spitting out spatter. But every now and then, it throws in some lava flows or shoots up some moderately high fountains. Sometimes, you might even catch a glimpse of steam-driven outbursts. Over 200 million years ago, the world went through a major makeover, with not one, not two, but four massive volcanic eruptions changing the game. It all happened in Renzelia, a large chunk of island that used to be a supermassive volcano stretching across what's now British Columbia and Alaska. This volcanic activity might have helped dinosaurs grow from cat-sized critters into giants we saw in Jurassic Park. It kicked off a 2 million year rainy season. It made the whole world hot and humid, and the dinos just loved it. Researchers dug deep into sediment layers beneath an ancient lake in China to uncover these secrets. They found traces of volcanic ash and mercury, clear signs of those epic eruptions. There were carbon signatures showing huge spikes in carbon dioxide levels, making the atmosphere toasty and the rain pouring down. It all happened in four separate pulses, each triggered by those monstrous volcanic blasts. There's a spot in a national park not too far away from Sydney, Australia, where a fire has been raging deep underground for at least 6,000 years. They call it Burning Mountain, and it's a coal seam fire, burning its way through a layer of coal beneath the Earth's surface. Once these underground fires start, they're pretty much impossible to put out. This ball of fire is up to 30 feet wide and extremely hot. But there's no flame, it's smoldering. The fire has been creeping along at a pace of about 3 feet per year. A local farmer first spotted it in the 19th century and thought it was a volcano. The people who have lived here for ages believe this place is sacred. They've used it for cooking and crafting tools, and tell that it started from a widow's tears or the torch of a hero. But experts think it could have been a lightning strike or coal heating up like a summer barbecue from the interaction with oxygen. Some say it might have been burning since before the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. No one knows exactly how long this mountain will burn or in what direction it'll move. Right now, the coal has enough oxygen to burn for centuries or even millennia without human intervention. The fire is heating up the mountain like a giant oven, making it crack and crumble, inviting in more oxygen to feed on. Even if humans decide to take action, these coal seam fires need truckloads of water and liquid nitrogen to tame them. Several years ago, explorers noticed that the smolder was creeping close to a cliff overlooking a little river. And depending on what the coal seam decides to do next, we could see some dramatic changes here in the coming decades. There could be flames with much more heat, or the coal seam could go deep, extinguish itself, and smolder out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.